Hello everyone, my name is Zenitsu and I'm back with another Digimon deck profile video. So today I'm going to be taking a look at BT12 and BT12 offers us lots of new and powerful tools to be able to build and iterate on some new and existing decks. And today's deck I'm going to be taking a look at is going to be an updated version of the Bagramon deck. So uh, Bagramon did get some new support in BT12 and is more on the casual side in terms of the competitive spectrum, but uh, what really is helping uh, drive the deck forward isn't necessarily the new uh, Bagramon, it's actually the inclusion of some of the Hunter cards, just because a lot of the Hunter cards are part purple and synergize very nicely with the deck, just because a lot of our cards that do interact with the save mechanic, so it only makes sense for us to try to want to incorporate some of the Hunter cards cards mixed in with what uh, Bagra Army was already doing was just trying to tax uh, some of the opponent's effects so that way we could try to anti-tempo them as best as we possibly can during their turn. So with all that said and done, let's just dive right into the profile. Starting off with the Digitama, I'm going to be running four copies of Monimon. If you want to run a fifth Digi Egg, you could, and I would recommend uh, BT3 Demi Marimon just because of the cycling that it has and we were using it before, so it's still good now. It's just now with Monimon, we're basically doing the same thing, just better because we're not discarding any cards, and this is one of the few purple decks that actually doesn't want a whole lot of cards in its trash, so we're just raw plussing off of our Monimon when our save base Digimon are getting deleted. Next, on to the rookies, I'm going to be running four copies of Soundbirdmon. So even though Soundbirdmon isn't a Bagra Army card, it is a uh, low-level Digimon with a, a, a really good inheritable ability that we're going to be seeing with a lot of our other Bagra Army cards to be able to anti-tempo the opponent when our sources are getting trashed by card effects, which the majority of our mid-to-high-level Digimon have that ability to at least uh, try to uh, get rid of its inheritable sources to be able to trigger this ability. But uh, what this card is doing is it's just another engine card for the deck, allowing us to be able to have access at shoving Digimon uh, from our hand underneath our tamer to be able to cycle through our deck as quickly as we possibly can. And on top of that, it does come with the on delete ability of save. So when it does get deleted, uh, it's going to go underneath our tamer. Next, I'm going to be running uh, four copies of Choo Choo Mon. So Choo Choo Mon is this deck's uh, dedicated digging and searching tool to be able to try to find our Bagra Army cards and our main tamer, which is going to be Yu Amano from BT10. Then he also has the on delete ability of save. So again, we could use it with Monimon and we could use it to tuck himself underneath our tamer. So that way we have access at his inheritable ability to use it with our tamer when we're either going to be digivolving or hard playing and crossing to be able to have access at that ability that we just saw with Soundbirdmon to anti-tempo the opponent due to our card effects. Next, I'm going to be running two copies of Chikurimon. So this is the BT11 Chikurimon, and this is another Bagra Army level 3 Digimon, so it has that trait-based synergy that we're looking to gain out of the card, on top of it being another consistency tool when we hard play it. Yes, you will be losing the body, but he does come with the on-delete ability of save, so he's going to go right away underneath our tamer if we have one set up, and again, there's that inheritable ability that we're going to be seeing with a lot of our Bagra Army cards to anti-tempo the opponent. And then the last rookie of the deck is going to be uh, four copies of Gumdramon. So even though Gumdramon is not a Bagger Army card, it's still a very powerful card for this deck to use because of how Bagger Army wants to work. So it has the Digicross 2 ability to basically make it cost 2 to hard play, so that way we could use it in combination with any of our other Digimon with save in their text, which a lot of them do have, to be able to start building up a stack and to get the inheritables we need underneath our Digimon. Then he does come with the save ability himself, and he also has a nice uh, on play ability uh, when we do hard play him, to be able to uh, tuck a uh, card from our hand underneath one of our tamer and draw a card, which also would potentially trigger the ability for us to utilize our tamer, making him a very important card for the deck, on top of his nice extra inheritable ability for us to use when we're being aggressive with our mid-stage Digimon, so that way we could get some extra card draws in as well. Next, on to the level 4s, I'm going to be running 3 copies of Damemon. 
So Damemon is kind of a interesting card. He's not a uh, Bagra Army card. He's a Cross Hearts card, so we don't necessarily have uh, that synergy. But we do care about uh, the fact that he is a Damemon by name, and he also has uh, an on play and when digivolving ability to try to be able to look at the top of our deck to try to find one of our core tamers and be able to set them up for free. So anyway, we have to be able to uh, try to uh, be able to set up our tamers is only going to help accelerate the deck. Then he also has an on delete ability, except his on delete ability is basically super save, where not only is he going to be saving himself, but he's also going to be uh, saving a card from our trash and putting it under our tamer, so that way we get more value out of the card. And he even has that same Digicross ability of two, where we're just going to be utilizing our save based Digimon to uh, tuck underneath him, to reduce his play cost, making him even easier to use as a level 4 Digimon. Then, the inheritable ability that we're going to be gaining off of this card is actually uh, the main reason why we're going to be playing him, is so that we have access at additional ways to be able to have Blocker in the deck. Next, I'm going to be running uh, two copies of Damemon. So this is the old Bagra Army version of Damemon, and this is another card to be able to try to help set up our main tamer, which is going to be our BT10U, as long as we don't have one when we're either playing him or digivolving up into him. Then, like a lot of the other cards in our deck, it does have the on-delete ability of save, and that same inheritable ability as we saw with a lot of our other Bagra Army cards. Next, I'm going to be running three copies of Troopmon. So Troopmon is going to be one of the core cards we actually want to sit on the field to try to uh, de-incentivize the opponent from doing a specific action. And the action we're trying to de-incentivize uh, the opponent from doing is being able to play their Digimon or Tamers. Otherwise, uh, we're going to use this ability to be able to tax them and then uh, getting rid of our inheritable abilities as long as we're getting rid of a lot of our Bagra army based inheritable abilities means that we're going to be taxing them even further to try to anti-tempo uh, what they could possibly do and try to force end their turn or just make their turn really awkward and then on top of that he has that same inheritable ability that we've been seeing with a lot of our other bagra army based cards to enable what this type of ability is allowing us to do Next, I'm going to be running two copies of Mad Leomon. So Mad Leomon, not only does he have that on delete ability of save, allowing us to utilize him in combination with a lot of our other save based cards, but we also have the ability to Digicross too. So we have an easy way to be able to hard play a level four Digimon if we wanted to with him utilizing just a Bagra army traded Digimon. Then uh, he is also going to be another card we want to sit on the field to punish the opponent for a specific action. And this time it's going to be when they're going to be trying to draw cards or increase their hand size. This allows us to be able to uh, try to uh, decrease their hand size and control their hand while also anti-tempoing them thanks to him wanting to trash our inheritable abilities. And that same type of sentiment is why I'm also going to be running three copies of Mad Leomon Armor Mode. So Mad Leomon Armor Mode allows us to use Mad Leomon and another Bagra Army traded card to be able to uh, Digicross him for essentially two. And on top of that, he also has that on delete ability of save. He has that same inheritable we've been seeing with a lot of our other cards. And he's trying to punish uh, the opponent when they're trying to add cards to their hand by uh, allowing us to uh, also be able to draw in benefit. So that way we could try to turn through our deck uh, as quickly as the opponent during their turn as well. And then the last uh, champion of the deck is going to be uh, three copies of Tawarmon. So Tawarmon can digivolve for one on top of a Damemon, which is why we care about having both Damemons, so we can have easier access at utilizing this Tawarmon. Otherwise, we're going to be paying a hefty three to digivolve into him normally. Unfortunately, he doesn't have save in his text, so we can't utilize him with some of our save-based synergies, but that's okay because we want to try to sit passively with him on the field to be able to take advantage of his all turns ability to be able to protect our main tamer. And on top of that, he still at least does have an on delete ability to be able to play out a Damimon, which again is why we care about having those different Damimons. So that way we have uh, multiple access at utilizing our abilities to be able to try to help set up our tamers. Then he does come with uh, the decoy of Bagra Army 
army, so it's just added protection for some of our other Bagra army cards while he's just sitting passively on the field. Then on top of that, uh, he has that same inheritable ability that we saw with a lot of our other Bagra army cards to, again, try to facilitate this anti-tempo attack style of gameplay. And then as far as uh, level 5s go, I'm only going to be running two copies of Muso Nightmon. So Muso Nightmon is going to be treated as a Dark Nightmon and Tawarmon, so we could use it with some specific synergies. But uh, what this card is doing is he has a nice uh, Digicross ability as an alternative way to play him outside of his uh, Digivolution costs. But we're not necessarily looking to utilize uh, that Digicross ability. We're just trying to uh, utilize him when we're Digivolving up our chain. Just because uh, his ability of on play also triggers when we Digivolve into him. Where we basically get to add to this Digimon's uh, Digivolution sources. And if there is a Tawarmon in his Inheritable abilities. Then we're going to be de-Digivolving one on three of the opponent's Digimon. So that way it tries to slow them down and disrupt their game plan. Then he also has a nice on delete ability that's acting as some good recursion, allowing us to grab back uh, two uh, black or purple Digimon from our trash and put it into our hand. So that way we could try to reuse it, some of the parts and pieces that we need when he gets deleted. And then as far as the, the level sixes go, I'm going to be running uh, two copies of Blastmon. So Blastmon is kind of the alternate win condition for the deck just because he has the rush ability and he has an on play ability to be able to gain blitz as long as he has three Digivolution sources in him, which we could easily set up thanks to our main tamer. Then he also has another ability that rewards us for trashing cards underneath our Digimon when the opponent's Digimon is going to be attacking to be able to delete their low level Digimon, which could stop a lot of low level aggression. Next, I'm going to be running two copies of Tactimon. So Tactimon is just going to be one of the defensive tools that we want to use, just because when we play him, we're not only going to be reviving two of our Bagra army traded Digimon, but they're also going to be able to gain the blocker ability, and uh, the Digimon that we're going to revive ideally are going to want to try to use to anti-tempo the opponent, just because uh, we could utilize uh, Tactimon's inheritable abilities, as basically a battery for the other Digimon for when we're trying to trash Inheritables to try to anti-tempo the opponent. And then uh, as far as the last level 6 of the deck, I'm going to be running two copies of Bagramon. So Bagramon is just an absolutely insane card for us to want to sit on just because uh, when we Digivolve up into him or when we hard play him uh, due to a forced Digicross, then uh, we get to uh, basically do one of two things. Either control the opponent's uh, hand if uh, they only have one Digimon or less in play, and if they have two Digimon or more in play, then we basically get to uh, remove one of them and shove it underneath uh, the other Digimon to try to have some alternative forms of removal that a lot of decks uh, don't have protection against. Then for him sitting passively on the field, he has a, a really powerful ability to chip away at the opponent's security when they're going to be either digivolving or cards are being placed underneath their Digimon, like with his uh, first ability uh, when we go up into this card, to be able to try to deal some decent damage and put pressure onto the opponent relatively safely. And then as far as the level 7s of the deck go, I'm only going to be running 3 copies of Darkness Bagramon. So Darkness Bragramon is just going to be another really powerful card for us to use just because he's going to be acting as some good removal when we go up into him while also feeding his inheritable sources. And then for him just sitting passively on the field when the opponent attacks or tries to digivolve, then we get to use his sources to not only a anti-tempo the opponents because of all of our inheritable sources inheritable abilities to allow us to gain a memory but it's going to be acting as some potential removal for the opponent's tamers. Yes, this does affect our tamers as well, but if we're dumping everything into Darkness Bagramon and our tamers don't necessarily have anything, then it's not the end of the world. Then he even has an alternative way to be able to play him outside of his normal Digivolution conditions with a nice Digicross utilizing Dark Nightmon, which in this deck is going to be Muso Nightmon, and Bagramon. And then as far as the Tamers go, I'm going to be running three copies of Taiki. 
So Taiki is going to be interacting with the save mechanic, acting as a way to be able to have some good card draw to try to dig through our deck as quickly as we possibly can while storing cards underneath him. And then uh, when we're digivolving into our other save based Digimon, we get to suspend him to add cards uh, from underneath uh, one of our tamers to reduce the digivolution cost. So it allows us to have uh, digivolution paths that are cheaper to get up into our higher stage Digimon. Next, I'm going to be running four copies of Yu Amano. So Yu Amano is going to be the most important tamer of the deck and uh, one of the most important cards in the deck just because uh, of what this card is doing facilitates a lot of how the deck wants to play. So it has a nice all turns ability uh, that's going to be uh, allowing us to gain extra resources when purple cards are going to be added underneath him. Then on top of that, the main draw of this card outside of that resource generation is uh, the ability to basically allow us to force Digicross when we're playing our level 4 or higher Bagra army cards to be able to reduce the cost of those cards and to be able to shove cards uh, from underneath our tamers under the Digimon that we're going to be playing. So that way we could try to reduce the play cost of that card even further. And this does stack per U, so the more U's you have on the field, the cheaper your Digimon can become, as long as you have enough inheritable sources uh, to use uh, for this ability. And then the last tamer of the deck is going to be one copy of Tagiru. So Tagiru is going to be the deck's dedicated memory fixing tamer, and it's just another card to synergize uh, with the fact that it's a uh, purple tamer that cares about the save mechanic. So that way, if we don't necessarily see uh, Taiki, we still have the ability to uh, be able to reduce the cost of digivolving into our Digimon, while also having alternative ways to be able to use uh, the inheritable sources that we're adding from underneath our tamer to our Digimon. And then the last card and last option of the deck is going to be one copy of Calling from the Darkness. So Calling from the Darkness is so good that it did get limited to one, which is why we can only run one copy. And this card is just trying to basically act as some extra card draw where we're adding two purple Digimon from our trash door hand to selectively try to reuse some of the parts and pieces we are looking for. And then as far as the general game plan and gameplay of the deck, you're just trying to uh, line up your level 4s, sit on the level 4s to try to anti-tempo the opponent, slow them down, so that way you could build up enough resources underneath your tamers to be able to play your level 6s relatively easily and then continue to control the opponent from there and start to think about aggressing. So uh, when it comes to how to best utilize your cards, the center and key focal point of the deck is going to be uh, around uh, the uh, BT-10 U Amano card just because of how much synergy this card has with everything that Bagra Army is trying to do. So the best Digimon we're going to want to utilize in our raising area is going to be Soundbirdmon. So that way uh, we could move out a Soundbirdmon, we could attack, and then we could place a card from our hand underneath our U, which will help uh, activate U's ability to generate us some extra resources. And then uh, the uh, on-delete ability of save with our Soundbirdmon will put him underneath our U, and then our egg will allow us to draw a card from there. So you could already see just from the onset of utilizing Soundbirdmon with a you on the field how much resources we could start generating as quickly as the deck allows us to. It doesn't necessarily matter if you don't have access to Soundbirdmon to start the train going because that's kind of where Gumdramon comes into play so that way we could cross with literally any of our uh, low level Digimon utilizing Gumdramon and then Gumdramon can do something very similar where we could shove a Digimon underneath our U, suspend the U, gain those resources. So that makes it so Gumdramon is a really cheap and efficient Digimon for this deck to use, especially if we have uh, one of the Hunter Tamers out as well, because then we could start Digivolving and then use the Hunter Tamers to be able to reduce the cost of the Digivolution, and because he Digicrossed with uh, our other save-based Digimon, he's going to have that inheritable ability that uh, Bagra Army wants to anti-tempo the opponent, so it just opens up lots of extra playlines uh, for how we could utilize the cards in our deck. 
And then uh, the other two level threes are literally in here just to try to help out search and dig. Then a lot of the effects are designated for our level fours that want to sit passively on the field to be able to limit and reduce the opponent's actions. The Leomons interact with card draw, so it really de-incentivizes the opponent from wanting to draw cards. And then at Troopmon is just to stop the opponent from trying to play specific cards. This is more meant to to be played against decks that actually care about playing Digimon and Tamers as an extra way to tax them so that way uh, they can try to uh, be as memory deficient as we can possibly make them and because we have a Uamano to start shoving underneath and we have the evolution method uh, that we could also use to start shoving Digimon underneath means that we have more ways to be able to uh, get the inheritables we need underneath our Digimon to use their abilities uh, as many times as we can allow it as long as they live and the fact that all of them also have save means that we could still utilize uh, our Digitama to be able to have access at that ability on top of various other abilities as well that do care about save. Then when it comes to uh, the Damemons, we're really just utilizing the two Damemons to try to help set up our Tamers. The new uh, Crosshearts uh, Damemon is specifically uh, interacting with the Yu, uh, Taiki, and Tagaru, which we have access at running them and kind of why I'm running them. Tagaru doesn't necessarily matter as much, but still comes in handy and still helps. And I think that Taiki is more important just because of the cycling that he's going to be offering, especially when we're trying to put Digimon in our inheritable sources to be able to use Yu Amano's ability as well. So uh, these just help facilitate that. And to Warmon, because we want to use to protect our Yu, we already want to use them and have uh, easy access at being able to Digivolve on top of them. But regardless, it's just a really good card to synergize with the fact that we're already playing Damimons. Then Muso Nightmon is kind of just a level 5 stepping stone in case you want to try to Digivolve into your level 6s. Most of the time, I don't find myself actually crossing into them. I just find myself a Digivolving on top of them just because it's a little bit easier. No, unfortunately, we can't utilize the Hunters to be able to reduce the cost of the Digivolution into our level 5s and 6s. Because uh, Digivolving uh, for cheap into some of our level 4s is going to be good enough. Then uh, Muso Nightmon is just to try to stall out the opponent and try to anti-tempo them slightly differently just because of the Digivolve. And if we really wanted to, the fact that he does have Digicross uh, means that we could try to line up the Digicross in combination with the U to be able to make them as cheap as we can possibly make them. Then uh, the Digimon we're only going to want to try to Digivolve into as far as our level 6 is going to be our Bagramon. Most of the time we're not actually trying to hard play him, but we still can because of how U works. And again, the more use that we have on the field and the more inheritables we have underneath our tamers, the cheaper our cards can become to accelerate our game plan, especially since we already have so many different ways to be able to add cards underneath our tamer to take best advantage of this card. But before you start customizing the deck and uh, making it your own, usually it's good to understand uh, the core of the deck and start with the core and go from there. So I kind of laid out this nice 42 card core based on what I was doing and all of the cards in here are still just trying to support you so you can try to support the deck. And then there's still just a whole bunch of other tech and tools that we could think about incorporating into the deck to really customize it and make it your own based on your own personal preferences and your expected meta. So uh, we do have uh, some of the other Hunter cards that, that we could think about incorporating just because they're interacting with save. So we do have uh, Ryoma as a good uh, tamer that's going to allow us to just add cards from our trash passively while also having a uh, secondary Yu Amano in black for us to think about. I don't necessarily think this is as good, but gaining the memory still can come in handy nonetheless while also being a Yu Amano tamer by name. Then uh, we do have uh, Psychmon as another good uh, save-based uh, Digimon uh, for us to play around with on the low levels. And then on the high levels, we also do have another Bagra army card in the form of Lilithmon that we could take advantage of. As far as a good alternative level 7, I think Death Exmon is just a good staple for any deck just because any deck can run him. 
And then we do just have a slew of different options that we could think about teching inside the deck, all depending on what you feel like you need. So Buzzing Fist can help us uh, dig and set up our Tamer. Astral Snatcher is just another good removal card on top of various other good purple removal cards. And we could even lean into some of the self-deletion based uh, purple cards. So that way we could trigger save our... Then we also have uh, some good memory boosts and we could even think about running the plugins if we really feel like we need the uh, versatility that the plugins offer. So that's all I really have for this video. As always, feel free to tell me your thoughts down in the comments below, and down in the description below are a couple of different ways you could support me and the channel. So I do have a, a TCG Player affiliate link, so when you use that link to buy cards off of TCG Player, then some of that money will go to supporting me and the channel. I also do make and sell playmats over on Overcard Gamers on Facebook, so when you buy a playmat with my design, then some of that money will also go to help supporting me and the channel. And on top of all of that, I do have a Twitch account over on twitch.tv slash Zenitsu. So giving me a follow and a subscription also helps support me there. And I do play Digimon on top of various other games on that platform as well. So thank you everyone for watching. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you in the next video.